All right, so it's still nasty and snowy out here, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and start tearing these heads down to clean them up. And uh, I bought this old um, valve spring compressor kit and everything for uh, my Mustang when I did the cam swap in it, and I remembered I had it. Of course, it doesn't really fit the 2JZ head, but this one piece does. So this right here will actually uh, compress the, uh, the spring and the retainer, and I can get the locks out so I can pull the spring out. But the thing is, is you can't just use that. So I come up with a different little way to do it and I'll show you. So like I said, I know this is a mess and this and that, and I know it's still all snowy and nasty, but I'll be cleaning this up, um, soaking these parts. But I take this piece right here, put it literally right on top of the uh, lock and the spring there. And I take this big C-clamp, big uh, six inch C-clamp, and I clamp it from underneath on the valve and I use the top here to actually push down on that and it actually works beautifully. Now here is a prime example of what I'm talking about. Popped it loose. And boom, of course you'll have to keep it straight, whatever. But now that that's done, get your magnet, get your locks, for everything do not lose your locks always keep these where you know they are all right so now we have all our locks out and they're in their own separate bag for the intake got all the intake valves out they're literally soaking right there and my daughter's little makeup thing she won't be getting back but yep all the intake stuff's out all the valve stem seals are out which were a pain now, something else I will say is uh, you might want to keep all your locks for the intake versus the exhaust and all of your stuff separate because obviously intake valves and exhaust valves are all going to be different sizes, but uh, you don't know how much actually is different. If you've never torn into an engine like this, like keep those springs separate because it might have uh, different uh, spring seat pressure. So keep all that stuff separate from one another so that way you know when you go to put it back together, it's going back together the way it was. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna soak them and let them soak for a good little while. And then I'm gonna clean them up with a, uh, like a, a nylon brush with uh, some brake parts cleaner and stuff to break all that stuff up. And then I'm going to uh, just lap the valves in with some lapping compound, just basically to clean it up. I'm gonna put new valve stem seals in there cause that came with the head gasket kit. And uh, that, that's pretty much, I'm just gonna do the basic stuff. I mean, the bottom end still, you know, higher mileage is like 200,000 miles or something. I just wanna get the car back on the road. I'm not worried about a full like rebuild. Now, if I was rebuilding the bottom end and everything, then this thing would get hot tanked, it would get everything. I'm literally just gonna check it for straightness with a straight edge. Um, so I have my machinist uh, straight edges and everything like long angle pieces. So I'm gonna use those to, uh, to make sure it's, you know, straight. If it's not, then, um, I don't know if it'll be worth going to an actual machine shop just to deck it and clean it up um, while it's apart. If so, then, you know, I might have my hot tank it then. But even then, if I can clean it up, you know, right here in the garage using like, uh, you know, a piece of, you know, glass and, and some sandpaper and stuff, just run it across it. And that's, that's an old trick to make sure because glass is flat. So we'll see uh, exactly how far I get into it. But this is where I'm at so far, just to show you that little trick on how to break that loose. Now, it only worked just because I had that piece for the Mustang uh, valve spring compressor, but I mean, use what you got. I mean, if you had a, you know, just use a socket if you have it and use a C-clamp, you can cut the side of a socket out and do the same thing, you know? So, I mean, there's, there's a million ways to skin a cat, but that's just an idea. So that's another little trick of the trade there, guys. Uh, if you can do it at home, do it at home. You learn a lot more, you do a lot more. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.